please welcome Fulbright Scholar to Zimbabwe and Chair of the Board of Directors of the Fulbright Association, Dr. Robert Gervaisi. Thank you. Thank you so much. Seeing this video, every time I see it, I continue to be moved and humbled by the company we keep. And I, as I've talked to so many people who have done extraordinary things, they don't see themselves as extraordinary people. They see themselves as ordinary people who have been blessed with the ability to do extraordinary things. And, and that is one of the key reasons why Gary and Matt are here this evening. After a while, you do extraordinary things, and you do become extraordinary people, so take it with. <laughs> um, you know, about 30 years ago, the United Nations named March 22nd of every successive year as the World Day of Water, an opportunity to focus the world's attention on exactly the kind of work that Gary and Matt have committed themselves to. And this year, on March 22nd, I remember it because it's my mother's, my late mother's birthday. Um, this year, their theme, every year there's a little, kind of little snippet theme, and the theme this year is water for peace. And I thought, what a wonderful coincidence that we are honoring Gary and Matt during the year when the United Nations is inviting us to reflect on the intersection of those two commitments. That F Senator Fulbright's vision of a world of peace and understanding has to go hand in hand with a vision of a world in which life's most basic and precious resource is available to all. Um, I was also pleased to hear John speak about inspiration and the sacredness of water, because that was my experience in Zimbabwe as well. It could have been exactly the same words that he spoke in terms of being astonished by how much time women, and of course it's women, spend of their lives gathering water, usually for men and children. Um, and, and what Gary and Matt are doing is not only helping people live the basics of life, but also be free to expand their own creativity as people, whatever their gender. Um, and I was I struck also when I think about the fact, I should mention that when I was in Zimbabwe, I taught at the University of Zimbabwe in the Department of Religious Studies, Classics, and Philosophy. Yes, they teach classics at the University of Zimbabwe, and they don't do that in very many places anymore in the United States, go figure. Um, but I was thinking about the fact that all of the great world religions do have this sense of the sacredness of water. The Hebrew scriptures, the Christian scriptures, the Quran, all speak about water as being the, one of the deepest, if not the deepest expressions of the love of divinity for the world and for humanity. And I was thinking also, as a classicist, that this is not just a religious observation and commitment, but it, it also was the start of Western philosophy. The, according to Aristotle, the founder of philosophy in Greece was not Socrates, but over a century before Socrates, a man named Thales of Miletus. Thales was the first of what are called the pre-Socratic philosophers. These were people who tried to understand the world in terms other than the traditional stories of mythology, Zeus and Hera and their friends. And what Thales came up with from his experience and observation and examination was he hypothesized that everything in, Korea, everything in the world was ultimately founded on a substratum of water, that everything is water. And um, as a student, of course, we dismissed that because he, he didn't know anything about splitting atoms yet. But actually, in retrospect, 
that was pretty astute for 6th century BC. And I was thinking about this, and then last night, as I was hoping to get a good night's sleep before this momentous event, I had a dream. And in that dream, Thales stood before me, <laughs> speaking to me. True story, true story. <laughs> and he said, are you Robert Gervaisi? And I said, yes. And he said, well, he said, I know you're in this Fulbright thing. And he said, and I think that what these two gentlemen have done is fantastic. We need a lot more people doing this. We need a lot more people understanding that water is everything. The problem is people don't realize that we started thinking about this stuff 6,000, I mean, 2,600 years ago. And um, we need to get back to our roots and realize that we're all in this together. We've been in, in this together from ancient Greece to today, to modern America. So you suggest that everybody in the room see the documentary that Mr. Damon did a few years ago about the water problem. Probably didn't, didn't get as wide attention as possible. And he went further and said, you know, these two gentlemen also know how to speak to audiences, and one of them produces and acts. And, you know, wouldn't it be great if he took a page out of his first experience in cinema, you know, Mystic Pizza? What we need is a rom-com called Mystic Water. <laughs> Maybe even Mystic Thales to help people go back and study ancient Greek philosophy. <laughs> so you might put it out there, but even if they don't bite, at least tell them they're doing a great job and we have to keep this water train going. So, I mean, that, that's, that's not me, that's Thales, true story. So with that, now it is my pleasure to offer you our Fulbright Prize Honor Roll, introducing our friends and partners in government here and around the world. I will do this in several waves and will lead the applause each time. First, we are honored to be joined by members of the House of Representatives, uh, and we have two with us right now, Congressman John Sarbanes of Maryland, who is a Fulbright, uh, Fulbright alumnus to Greece. <laughs> um, and uh, Congressman Mark Takano of California. We are so grateful, please stand. We are so grateful for your presence and your steadfast support of the Fulbright program. I especially want to thank our fellow Fulbrighter, John Sarbanes, who will be retiring after 18 years of exceptional service to our country and the world. The administration is well represented here by three groups of people, and I ask that they stand. And uh, hold your applause until they all stand. Members of the presidentially appointed Fulbright Foreign Scholarship Board, our cop, please stand, our colleagues from the State Department's Bureau of Educational and Cultural Affairs, and our friends at USAID. The Fulbright program succeeds through partnerships with 49 commission countries and over 100 embassy posts. We are delighted to welcome our diplomat colleagues from these countries and those who work with water.org. First, let me introduce the ambassadors, and I ask that they stand, and I ask again that you hold your applause in, <laughs> until they all are standing. This happens at college commencements too, right? I mean, um, and so I will 
introduced them in, in the alphabetical order of their countries. Ambassador Schneebauer of Austria, Ambassador Nason of Ireland, Ambassador Moctezuma Baragan of Mexico, Ambassador Amrani of Morocco, Ambassador Majorowski of Poland, Ambassador Duarte Lopez of Portugal, Ambassador Muraru of Romania, Ambassador Yavorczyk of the Slovak Republic, Ambassador Duran of Uruguay, who is a fellow Fulbrighter, and Ambassador Kanza of Tanz Tanzania. Please stay standing as we also recognize the charge the affair and deputy chiefs of missions from the following countries who have joined us this evening. And I ask that they stand as well. Chile, Egypt, Greece, Hungary, Indonesia, Tecro, and Thailand. You may be seated. We are also delighted to be joined by counselors and representatives of other Fulbright Commission countries. And I ask that you stand, the countries of Argentina, Czech Republic, France, Germany, Luxembourg, Pakistan, Peru, South Korea, Spain, and Turkey. You may be seated. Finally, we are honored that our 2012 Prize Laureate, Doctors Without Borders, is represented here by Casey Saunders and Nejma Banks. Please stand. Doctors Without Borders continues to serve the world with exceptional humanity and courage in some of the most challenging and dangerous places on earth. Join me again in thanking them and their colleagues in serving us all. <laughs> Last but not least, and they weren't expecting this, I have to thank, there are so many VIPs in the room here, but I have to say that there's just no way around the fact that, for me personally, the VIPs that I want you to at least see and acknowledge are my good friend and mentor and colleague, Dr. Donna Carroll, from the, who is executive, please stand for a moment, the executive director of the Association of Catholic Colleges and Universities, uh, my daughter, Sarah Ross, and her husband, Colin Ross, and my ever-loving wife, Jennifer Gervaisi. I will hear about that later. <laughs> Give me a break. <laughs> so thank you all for joining us this evening for this great celebration. Senator Fulbright would be very proud, and so would Thales. Thank you. <laughs>